Hey everyone, we had some huge news come out for PayPal stock investors that there's a couple ways to look at it, which I think is informative for investors to take a look at both sides of what just happened here. So in this video, I'm gonna highlight what that big news was, and I'm gonna take a look from both perspectives, both looking at it on the good side, on the positive side, and looking at it on the negative side. As a PayPal stockholder myself, I'm conflicted how to look at this news. So bear with me and let's go through this news. Let's decipher what it could mean for PayPal stock investors. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So here's the news I was talking about. Due to recent changes, Venmo can no longer be added as a payment method on Amazon. Venmo will remain available to users who currently have it enabled in their Amazon wallet until January 10th, 2024. Of course, Amazon is a behemoth where millions, hundreds of millions of shoppers spend money on Amazon. And so not being able to use your Venmo account on Amazon is a blow to Venmo users and a blow to PayPal who relies on Venmo for its growth of its overall business. Venmo is one of the growth drivers of the business overall. And if you're not able to use Venmo on Amazon, that's going to make it less convenient to use your Venmo account. It's going to make it less likely that you use your Venmo account, that you tell your friends to send you money on Venmo and willing to send your friends money on Venmo because now you're thinking, well, now I can't use it on Amazon. And so it's one piece of the overall reason why people use Venmo. It's not the only reason why people use Venmo, but it's one reason. And the less reasons you have to use one payment service or another makes it less likely you will use it. Now, I will highlight here that in this relationship between Amazon and Venmo and PayPal, Amazon has the negotiating power. Amazon is the giant and PayPal is minor compared to Amazon. PayPal does not have the scale of Visa or MasterCard, right? Visa and MasterCard have 4 billion accounts, 4 billion cards outstanding. And so if Amazon was to try and flex its negotiating power against Visa or MasterCard, there may be a different story, but if Amazon tries to flex its negotiating power against PayPal and Venmo, it's going to have a lot more success. And this is where I'm looking at this as, as a two-sided relationship here and thinking, was this really a bad thing for PayPal? Was this really a bad thing for PayPal? Now, remember, the new CEO came in just a little while ago, and one of the main points this new CEO is making is saying, look, we're going to go after profitable growth, profitable growth. And so the focus on profitable, I think, is a factor here in this relationship with Amazon where I'm, I'm relatively certain that Amazon has flexed its negotiating power against PayPal and said, look, if you want us to allow our payment method as PayPal or Venmo, you're going to have to offer us better terms, better terms and so lower transaction fees. And PayPal might look at this and say, maybe it's better if we just end this relationship. Like maybe it's not good for us to be on Amazon as a payment method because it's overall not positive for the company and our prospects for profitable growth. Maybe we end this relationship here, at least in this part, right? They've both said that they still have a relationship together. They're still going to work together. So this is not a falling out. This is just one piece of the equation here. And PayPal looking at this segment and saying, maybe it's not profitable. Now it's too early to be, to be seen. And I'm sure we're going to hear more about this when PayPal management informs investors at their next quarterly earnings update. But for now, I'm looking at this as a question mark. Is it good? Is it bad? Overall, I'm a fan of more profitable growth and understanding the negotiating power of Amazon. I don't think PayPal has friendly terms with Amazon. Well, I shouldn't say friendly or lucrative terms with Amazon where that relationship is very lucrative for PayPal. If I had to bet, I would say Amazon has the more favorable end in that negotiation. And so 
ending that relationship, I don't know if I'm I'm too upset about it. Nevertheless, PayPal stock price was down on this news about one and a half to two percent, which I think is reasonable. I think it's a reasonable reaction to this kind of news. It's not something that can be seen as good news, right? You can't say it's it's totally good, no brainer, good, positive direction. It's kind of a question mark, and so it's understandable for investors to respond with this question mark as a result of this news. Bigger picture here, remember PayPal is on a streak of losing monthly active accounts, right? You could see here active accounts peaked at 435 million in the fourth quarter of 2022, fell to 433 million to 431 million, and then accelerated by 3 million to 428 million. So one, two, three straight quarters of active account decline. So management saying that this reflects the churn of minimally engaged accounts and the strategic decision to focus on driving higher activity levels with existing active accounts. And the new CEO came in and reiterated this focus of going after those higher active account users, not those users that once in a while use their PayPal if we offer them a promotion or when it's super convenient for them to use PayPal. They want to go after those users that can be lucrative for PayPal, those that will be using PayPal more frequently, those that PayPal can serve better. And I'm a fan of that approach. I've been saying with many of the companies that I follow, I'm not a fan of going after customers just for the sake of going after new customers. I like management to be targeted in the going after the customers that they can serve most profitably and in this case i've said it before already in the video i don't know if going after the amazon account is worthwhile for paypal i don't know that for sure i don't know that for sure i also don't know that it's bad for sure right i just know i know that amazon has a strong negotiating position and I've seen Amazon flex its negotiating power in the past and make it not very lucrative for their partners. Notably, you can recall, yeah, this is maybe 15 years ago now, but when Amazon flexed its power against UPS and it got UPS to cave and give Amazon better terms. Now those terms may have been renegotiated since then, but that was just one example of Amazon flexing its power against its uh, against its uh, partners and getting better terms for itself. And so you have to agree that Amazon has strong negotiating power and dealing with Amazon, you have to give up a lot to get them to be in a relationship with you to give you access to their hundreds of millions of customers. And so it may not be such a bad thing that PayPal severs this relationship, at least for Venmo, not allowing Venmo on the platform. This is likely a two-sided um, situation here. I don't think it was a situation where Amazon just said, okay, no more Venmo. I think it was the term was coming due and Amazon and Venmo entered and PayPal entered into talks for renewing an agreement. And ultimately Venmo probably felt that Amazon was asking too much in exchange for allowing Venmo as a payment method. Again, I can't, I can't verify that, but that's just my hunch. That's my um, estimate of what likely happened in this situation. So I'll go back to PayPal's valuation. PayPal stock trading at a forward price to earnings of 10.43. In my opinion, a excellent risk versus reward for investors. Sure, like I showed you, PayPal has its risks. It's losing active accounts. It's falling transaction profit margin. And this news here could be a, another question mark for PayPal. But I will reiterate, I think the risk versus reward here is attractive for PayPal stock investors. Even after this news, I think it's still attractive for PayPal stock investors. And I myself own PayPal stock and I will continue to own it. This wasn't news that will cause me to sell PayPal stock. 
Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.